Okay, in the last lesson, we set up a player struct for our Zig Invaders clone. And in this lesson, we're gonna go ahead and set up some movement. So we're gonna use the keyboard input for player uh, movement. You can also set this up with a controller. That might be a fun little project as well. But for now, we're just gonna so, uh, focus on keyboard movement. So we have our player here. I'm gonna go to the player struct. And what I'm gonna do is add a new public function. So I've got update, and this is gonna be self at this. And that actually was really, really good on Copilot's part, but I can't just let Copilot write that and me not explain it. So what I'm gonna do is tell you as I type it out. So I'm gonna use the Rayla library and check is key down. And this is checking that whenever we call this update method, if the key is pressed, we need to provide it a keyboard. So I can say raylib.keyboard key dot right. Then I want to set self dot position plus equals self dot speed. Yeah, I want to add the speed to the position. That's really it. We can do the same thing here. Check if is key down, keyboard left. And then we want to subtract the speed from the position. So essentially, if you press right, you're going to move well, your position is going to move up by your speed. And then given that our coordinates are going to be on the x-axis, uh, zero will be the leftmost side of the screen. And then the rightmost side of the screen is, uh, in our case, I think we set the dimensions to 800 pixels. So you'll be able to go up to 800, and you'll be able to go down to zero. Technically, you can do more than that right now. So we'll have to set up some bounce checking at some point to facilitate that. Okay, this update method, I really want to highlight one important thing, notice the pointer. So there's a pointer to at this. As I mentioned in the previous video, we're taking a pointer because we want to modify it. We need a mutable reference. We aren't just reading these values, we actually need to update them. If we hop back to our main method, what we can do is in our main game loop after clear background, we can add something like player.update. And the way that this works is we have 60 target FPS. So we're gonna be executing 60 frames per second. So what we're doing is while this loop is running, um, it is going to be executing this player update and every single frame it's gonna be calling update, update, update. And that update's gonna check if those keys are pressed. And if they are pressed, it's gonna modify the player position just like we ri have written the code to do. It would be really nice if we could actually draw this to the screen. So what we're gonna do is come back up to our player struct, and we're gonna add a couple more functions. So I wanna add a draw function, so pub fun draw, and it's gonna take in self. And we just talked about this, but I'm gonna iterate it one more time because it's so important. We don't need a pointer because we're not modifying anything. We're just reading. So we're going to use at this with no pointer to say, hey, we are taking in a self just to read. And the return type for this draw method is gonna be void. We're gonna use raylib.drawRectangle. And that is not what I want. So raylib.drawRectangle. We need a position x, so we're gonna use int from float and we're gonna say self.position x int from float self.position y int from float self.width int from float self dot height. And then finally, we need to give this a color. I'm going to say raylib dot uh, color blue. One really interesting thing, you'll notice my cursor is very far to the right. Zig is an auto formatter, um, and it's pretty comma based. So if I add a comma here and then save, 
you'll see that it formats this much more like I would expect, but if I leave the comma out, it'll put it all on one line. I also really want to highlight something else. If you were with me in the earlier lessons, you noticed that we were converting a lot of ints to a lot of floats, and now we're converting those floats back to ints. So I'm going to be completely honest with you. Part of the reason I wanted to push towards floats here was an opportunity to introduce people to some of these built-ins, because I find that for me, on my learning journey with Zig, one of the hardest things to do was to realize what are the built-ins. And there's not like there's not a good way. The compiler doesn't suggest, hey, it looks like you're trying to convert a float to an integer. Actually, it it, it might in this case, because that one's kind of obvious. But there are um, so many built-ins, and so many of them, there's not a good way to know that they exist. Like mem copy is a really important one that outside of you wanting to do something and saying, wow, there's got to be an easier way to actually do this. Um, there's no reason you would know that it exists, but it's important to know it exists because it's very helpful. So really, my goal here, you could simplify this if you want, change a lot of your types to ints, and I think you'd have just as good of an experience. Um, but I really want to push the idea that these built-ins exist and you need some experience using them. Is this optimal? No, you could simplify it. Is it a good learning opportunity? Yeah, I, I think so. And really, that's my goal, is to help you find the best way to learn Zig. Okay, so we have our draw method. I want to set up one more method, and this is going to be pub fun get wrecked. And what we're going to do is essentially take this, we're going to read it, and what I want to do is return a rectangle. So we can return dot x is equal to self dot position x dot y is equal to self dot position y dot width is equal to self dot width and then dot height is equal to self dot height. Why in the world are we getting a rectangle? Well, we wrote some collision logic up at the very top that checks whether a rectangle collides with another rectangle. We don't have like inheritance per se. We don't have anything like that in Zig. So I can't say that player extends a rectangle and we can't just include all of the rectangle methods. Zig is a very explicit language, and it doesn't, in my opinion, I think that's great. It does a great job making sure that there's not some weird um, level of indirection that helps hoist something from one scope to another or provide something from one struct in another. And even Go, which is a language that I also really like, kind of suffers from this problem with struct embedding. And Zig just doesn't have this same perspective. So what we need to do is we need to figure out how to convert our player to a rectangle. Thankfully, it's really straightforward. So we can use this get rectangle function that we've just written. Again, we don't take a pointer. We just take at this for self because we're just reading and we return a rectangle. We're using an anonymous struct. Because we're specifying that we're returning a rectangle, our compiler can look at the struct of a rectangle and make sure that these fields match, and if it does, everything's good. And if it doesn't, we will get a compiler error. Okay, I think with all of this added, the last thing we really need to do is head back to our main method. And then somewhere down here at the bottom, after updating, we want to say player.draw. And again, I know I am continuing to hound on this, but I just want to stress again that we are adding more and more code here. And when we do, you can keep in mind that that code is effectively being executed between begin drawing and end drawing because we are using the defer keyword here to defer ending the drawing. Okay, I'm going to use zig build run. I can do this from NeoVim, and you can see we can now use the arrow keys to move our player. This feels pretty good. Um, and again, you can, from your terminal, use zig build run to execute this as well. And like I mentioned before, if you get stuck, uh, escape will close the application for you. So you noticed a problem. The player can move off the screen. So in the next lesson, what we're going to do is add boundary constraints.